so without you know further ado it's kind of just back to talking about key points that we got to kind of do so i have my points here on the side obviously this will change uh, and what i mean by it will change um is i'm going to put this in bigger things and kind of make it a lot more digestible i guess for you guys is the best way to put it so we'll start with one well first off we'll get out of iris's pov um and we'll go somewhere where it kind of makes sense to look at this stuff so right here is like a good perspective to kind of look at so we'll start with one uh and then we'll kind of go from there so the first thing we're going to look at is positioning um positioning will be the first like big step for BAP. Um, so overall, I find with positioning, the big thing is you need to ask like your question of specifically, oh, okay, let me, let me put it like this. It's kind of one point and then it kind of goes from there. It's, when, whoop, don't like that H when to be then it sections off far and when to be tight tight meaning like being very close to your team you want to make sure that you are um in a good like in that position so positioning a lot of the times there it's hard to kind of look at BAP in some ways because BAP and Brawl and BAP and Dive and BAP and Double Shield uh, it it differs every time right in positioning you'll notice like I'll talk about it a lot based off of his abilities uh, and based off of how the fight kind of goes so you need to identify when you want to be a little bit further away from your team and when you need to be close together with your team and a lot of the time uh, usually a strong way to identify this is you want to be closer uh, to your team when you're doing something explosive. Uh, so when you're trying to do something really fast and do it um, together, like or like a rotation or coming out of a choke, anything like that. Um, the other thing you need to keep in mind with when to be tight as a team, uh, aside from being explosive, is you need to base it off of... Um, I want to say it's like enemy composition, but I would say it's like a mixture of the enemy comp and it's a mixture of, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do enemy comp for now. I, I won't make it very difficult and by, or instead of difficult, like the better word to use there is I won't make it like more complicated. I think that's a big way. Like you want to be explosive when you're, when you want to be tight with your team, you want it to be so that you're explosive, you're going out of a corner really fast, you're going out of a choke really fast, or you're trying to make a fast play, right? That's when you want to be a little bit tighter because the rotation will be very quick, precise. And if you're not with them, then you're going to be left behind in a very awkward position away from the people that can help you, right? And the power of that push will go down if you do not do that. Uh, the other reason why I say it depends on the enemy composition is, again, um, it's very much so if you're against, like I said, like a brawl, for example, you don't want to be close. You don't want to be tight um, because then you're going to get cleaved by Reinhardt, right? So you want to be a little bit further away at the start. And then maybe depending on who goes down, like a, if the enemy Reinhardt goes down, for example, that's when you start to close a little bit more of the distance play, much, much more aggressive. Um, again, it's very much so based off of that. In terms of farness, it's very much, um, again, enemy composition is a big part of it. And I would say the other thing to keep in mind in terms of it is like you're playing, I guess the best way to put it, put it is put a pace on it. You're playing slower. Um, as you can tell, I have no tempo kind of notes here for BAP. And a lot of the times the way that you try to, or I try to explain BAP to people for tempo wise is you, you again, abilities is going to be a key thing we talk about, but positioning as well, uh, you want to start a little bit further away if you're going to play slower. Right, like if you're playing to poke, if you're playing to play more to destroy a shield or potentially look at threats and clear threats before you walk forward and do something, that's the key way, right? Uh, again, it depends on enemy composition again, 
Um, blah, blah, blah. I'll put Brawl here, like in brackets, because that's kind of like. Uh, I guess Brawl. I'll put Brawl for. No, no, no. I think this is fine. Brawl here. Uh, and then here, overall, like enemy comp, I'll put uh, tight poke. Generally, compositions as well. Um, something to also add to all of this is usually you will start. Excuse me. Most of the time, and by most, I mean probably about seventy percent of the time, you're gonna play far anyways to start, and then. 30% of the time you'll start the other way, like you'll start tight, um, but most of the time you'll end uh, tight. That's like probably like 80% of the time you're ending like with your team and all that kind of stuff. So this is with regard to positioning, right? We need to identify when to be far and when to be tight with your team. And these are the th factors that affect it, right? So let's go to the next important thing, which is LAMP is a big cooldown that we have to understand how to do really well here. Uh, in terms of LAMP, there's two solid kind of points to keep in mind here with LAMP. Number one point is we need to be careful about our location of the LAMP. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, specifically with location, it's really important with corners. Um, well, in general, it's not just corners, but in general, you want to put it in a position where it's not easy to break, right? You don't want to put it smack in front of the enemy team. Uh, that way they can just burst it really fast. Uh, big thing is to put it by terrain to make it a little bit more difficult for the enemy team. A good example is corners. Uh, when you do it, you play it, you put it on your corner that you control when you're trying to control the pivot point again. Um, and then from there is if they can't control the pivot point for the corner, your lamp will be on your side. And in order to break your lamp, they have to turn and try to retake control of the pivot point from you. And if they don't, then they end up losing just because they aren't able to break your lamp. And if they try to lamp, you should be able to break theirs because you control the pivot point and you can see their side where they can't see your side. Again, that's like a very blatant example. Other examples where it's a little bit more open, you just try to put it to terrain close by to players that are a little bit more aggressive. Um, and again, it's just so that they can't break the lamp a little bit more easily. Uh, the, lax, the next thing that's kind of difficult is when to use. Like, when should I use the lamp? Why, why would I have to use the lamp? Most of the time, it's... Uh, I'm slanting my writing. That's not good. Anyways, um, most of the time people kind of say, oh, well, it's when someone's going to die. Well, that's an obvious thing to say, but can we quantify that to a smaller degree of when to utilize it? Is is it just when they're about to die? No. Um, I've had people kind of, I've talked to a lot of flex supports when they played BAP, and a big problem with lamp usage and putting it out at the right time is talking to BAPs. They're like, well, I... I don't know how fast someone's going to die. Like, I'm scared that I'm not going to put it out in time. Um, I don't know when, like, based off of HP, like, when do I do it? I, like, the critical kind of um, marker or label that happens when enemies are, I think your teammates, sorry, are below a certain percentage of HP isn't usually good enough. You can't react fast enough. So usually what I do is I put an indication of when to use based off of... Um, based off of HP, obviously. I don't do it based off of cooldowns because cooldowns are very hard. Uh, lamp is used, again, to save someone from dying, right? So utilizing, let's say, we'll utilize tanks first because most of the time you're going to be using the lamps on your tanks in majority of these situations. You're not going to be using it on a DPS player unless they're trying to do a very heroic play like a barrage potentially in the enemy face or anything like that. But overall, um, something that I kind of told my that players is this looking at Arissa right from Atlanta's side I try to explain it that you don't want to use it when they have full armor obviously and it's kind of hard to use it when he's about this HP right because he's just going to die if you don't 
react fast enough. And most of the time, even if you do react fast enough, the lamp takes a few moments to pop and activate, right? So a big part that I always tell people is, okay, well, why don't you just do it when they have no armor? Don't don't put the risk out there, right? If they have no armor, look to pop that lamp, right? If it's other characters, I say, well, half HP. Half HP is always a good indicator. Maybe you, maybe you, you might use it like in a way where you don't have to, but most of the time, again, remember, you're utilizing the lamp for your tanks to be able to continuously hold that space, to be able to keep pressuring forward. Um, it's not most of the time used for your DPS, again, like I said. So you need to understand when to use. It's based on HP, and I would say good indicators, no armor, um, other indicator, half HP, um, I'm gonna have to like put this cause I can see, I can see this is like struggling a bit. There we go. Uh, there we go. The other thing I'll add to that obviously is I'll say, um, use mainly for tanks, right? Again, reason why you need them to keep holding space, like applying that pressure. It's not for DPS most of the time, it's mainly for them. Okay, so that's for lamp. Now the next thing to kind of look at, right, aside from lamp, is we got to kind of look at the next part, which is I would say window is probably the next difficult part, I would say, with map. Um, now, why do I say window is very hard for bat players? It's because there's a lot of factors that come with window. And a big part that I would say with window is people kind of look at window and like, oh, window's easy. You just like, you window when they're, when they're about to engage. They window, you window when you do this. But then most bat players that I see window, oh, like right when they're going to engage, then you see them kite back. Then it's like, well, I didn't window correctly or they'll window when they're engaging and then the fight's over and they're like well I like I did it like I did it I feel like I did it at the right time but I feel like there's no value right and this is where I kind of tell you that window is a very interesting ability because the positioning of it is very important um and how you utilize it in terms of tempo is also very important right um so the big points like with window that I would say that people have to keep in mind is number one, uh, how do you position it when you're doing a corner? Um, I'll do it like this. Position. Based off the corner, right? Oop. And then the other one is open. Now, I, I don't have it in an enclosed area because most of the time enclosed areas, they do have those corners. You're utilizing those corners to your advantage. So the corners are more so those enclosed areas compared to open where there is very few corners. It's more of a big, big area, right? Um, and the big part here, uh, I'll go back to that actually. I'll focus more so on the next two points first. Um, and then I'll kind of go back to this positioning thing because it'll make a little bit more sense once I kind of do this. So the big thing that you have to understand with window as well is you need it to be first tempo. Uh, what I mean by first tempo is you got to rip it. You need to think about it as your window is not, you can utilize your window to react sometimes, but most of the time when you react to the enemy push, it's already too late. Uh, you don't get value with your window. It feels like it's not a very good window. It feels very poor. Um, overall, sorry. Overall, it just does not feel that good. And the thing that you need to understand is the reason why it doesn't feel good when you're reacting with a window is because you're feeling as if you need to get the value with the window. And the value with the window isn't about getting kills. And that's where people go wrong with window. The value from the window comes from the fact of, hey, I get resources out with my window, which means people can clean up kills. If you get kills with your window, that's an extra bonus. That's not the goal of the window. The goal of the window is to get cooldowns or force enemies in a very awkward position, right? To choose to go past the window or to have to back up from the window, right? 
that's why people kind of try, they try to use it a second tempo window and just wait for the engagement to happen, then go and use it. But again, you, the big thing that you have to understand, oh, I lost my cursor. Uh, okay. The big thing you have to understand with this stuff, right, is whoop, tempo. You're using it for first tempo to force CDs plus put your enemy in a poor position. Again, it if you get a kill, that's an extra bonus, but that's not the key thing that you're looking to utilize with this window here, right? Um, which goes into last point, which I think is a really bad thing that a lot of people kind of have a hugely bad habit about, which is be ready to leave the window. Uh, the big thing to by what I mean by this is I find that a lot of bat players, they put down their window and they're like, I have to play by this window. Like, this window is my life. This window is what I got to do. But n that's not true. You need to understand that your job as BAP isn't when the window is down to hug it for the full duration. Yes, you're going to get value. Yes, maybe if you move away from the window, you're not going to be able to do a lot. But you need to keep in mind where the fight is actually happening. If you can't see anything, why are you staying by the window? Just because it's active, that makes no sense, right? You got to think about it simply. If the fight happens outside of your window, it doesn't mean that you're not getting value at the window. It means you might have gotten value at the start, but now how the fight is progressing, it's progressing in a way where you need to leave that window. You need to adjust your play. You need to move, right? And that's the thing that a lot of people don't really understand. You need to move a little bit more, right? Don't be stuck in the past. Like Focus on the next thing, right? Be ready to leave that. And that will make me go back to this positioning with corners and open areas, right? Talking about first tempo, talking about being ready to leave this, right? In terms of positioning with corners, we talked about this a little bit when we went through Florida versus Atlanta. But to remind everyone, again, I'm talking about that corner control. We did a great thing in terms of concept review on it. And pivot point. Whoop. If I can spell pivot correctly. Um... It's all about the pivot point, guys. And by the pivot point, I mean the halfway mark of the corner, right? When you go around the corner, when you go into a tight area, you want to make it so that wherever you're windowing, and you're windowing very aggressively, you're windowing so that they're able to, or well, you're not, they're not able to, but you're able to take corner control. You're able to pretty much right when they try to walk up, instantly able to pounce on them, right? Be right into their line of sight. You want to fight for that space. And that's the big thing that you have to understand with these tight areas or these corner areas. You need to do it at the pivot point because it's the biggest control. Even if you do not win or get kills from the window, you're going to force them back and make them have to give up so much space because they can't fight you at those corners. Mainly just because you're just in a super strong power position, right? Which goes into open areas. How do I utilize a window in an open area? Well, going to this idea of first tempo, right? The big thing that we need to keep in mind is, well, how do we think about first tempo? Well, this is where it kind of goes into this weird kind of line where it's, okay, well, in an open area, I need to keep in mind where they're kind of fighting, where we want to fight. Um, and a lot of it comes down to, excuse me, comes down to chokes is a big part I'll say. And it comes down to, I'm trying to think of a best way to put this. And I think this is the best way I can explain it based off of my understanding. Um, so I'll call them line of engagements. Um, now what I mean by that, Just write this word down first. So I'll quickly go out of this and then I'll kind of show you what I mean by a line of engagement. So what I mean by a line of engagement is just similar to this, right? Enemy utilizing this as an example, right? Now this is kind of corner. I need a more open area. Where's an open area? Actually, this is going back towards third is probably a good idea, even though there's like some corners here and stuff. This is a little bit open, right? There are corners here. There's a corner over here. There's a corner over here. But most of the time, 
when you're windowing, it's you're not doing too much corner control. It's mainly going to be in this open area here. So what I mean by a line of engagement is simple. So I'm going to erase this real quick, but don't panic. It will be back up in a moment. Just double check. Yep, we're good. Okay. What I mean by lines of engagement is you want to look to pop the window when they cross a certain line. Um, so for example, I want to make sure that this line of engagement that I'm drawing in my mind or I'm visualizing is in an area that right when I pop the window, they're going to be stuck in a very awkward transition, right? So as they walk up, for example, if the card is just turning around this corner and such, right? I don't want to window as they're at this corner because if I window while they're at that corner, that doesn't really do anything for me, right? realistically they can hide around that corner they can play a little bit slower right i want to look to activate my window potentially for defending side when they cross this line why that line well it's very simple right if they're at this line specifically tanks probably at this line of engagement then that tells me one of two things number one right when they have to choose where to go they either need to go forward into my window or they have to go back to the corner. But look at this distance, right? This distance is pretty far going backwards. The distance over here is pretty far too. So they're kind of stuck in the middle, right? Which is where my point number two comes in. The reason that you're waiting until this line of engagement is because you're forcing them in an awkward position to where they're unable to get to a safe position in time. So then their, their judgment and their decision making is impaired because they have to then decide on the fly what's a good idea. Do I back away? Do I go fight now? What do I do, right? And most of the time, again, if you go that first tempo window and you're ready to do execute when they pass that line, right? When they cross that line, then most teams won't know what to do and people will go in different directions, which is a key thing that you need to keep in mind. These lines of engagements are very important in the open areas because once they cross it, you'll see maps like instantly look to execute. So that's what I kind of mean by line of engagement. Um, with regard to windows and more open areas. So we're gonna zoom all the way back so that I can finish this off. And we're almost done. Oh, ah, there we go. Let's go to this window instead. Perfect, okay. So talked about window, we talked about line of engagements, talked a lot about a lot of different things here. Now, I've kind of run out of room here, so I'm going to erase some of these points, right? And I'm going to put them up here now. Uh, you're going to notice that I don't have exo boots in here, and that's because I do think they're somewhat important, but they're not the most important. I think they're a lot, most people do that quite well. Uh, the only thing that is my big issue is most people will just pop it randomly, but again, that's why that's not there. Um, but we'll talk about shift first, and then we'll kind of go from there. So the fourth point that I want you guys to keep in mind when looking at map is shift usage. Um, now before in the past with uh, the shift from Baptiste is I used to tell my BAP that you want to utilize your shift when we're brawling. Because when we're brawling, it means that you don't have to focus a lot on healing. And on top of that, it makes it so that you can kind of focus on shooting a little bit more uh, and you can deal with flanks on your side, right? You Your team can play that much more aggro because they have that healing. And then if you add that shift healing over time with amp, it just makes a very good time in terms of sustaining a lot of the time. Or if you're playing like with a break, it's think about it like amp plus inspire, you get a lot of healing over time. Um, however, now that has changed. Uh, the landscape of shift usage is a little bit different now just because the numbers of shift actually went down towards the start of this year. So something I learned over time um, after talking with my own players on Raspberry Racers and talking with different coaches is that it's not really a good idea probably to actually utilize shift in team oriented way anymore. Um, shift is more utilized for yourself. Well, what do I mean by utilize it for yourself? Um, what I mean is there's no key trigger in terms of I need to utilize my shift now uh, for people. Um, there is no big macro thing. It's a lot more on a whim. You kind of use it based off of what you feel is the best way to utilize it. Um, big thing to think about is like, for example, kind of like looking at this, you're, you're getting dove, right? If you're getting dove, then you want to use it 
for yourself specifically to keep yourself alive. Um, if you are, if you're safe, right, and you see that your team is taking a little bit too much pressure, then you just use base off HP. Um, and the last thing with regard to utilizing for self, right? If you're getting dove, like use based off of HP. Um, the last thing I would say is when you're util utilizing it for yourself, you got to also think about not just like if you're getting pressured, right? So dove, I'll put pressured here in brackets, um, based off of the HP, uh, situation of your team. I would say the last thing has to do mainly just based off of uh, your healing resources. So what I mean by healing resources is, for example, if you want, let's say that you're winning the fight, right? And you want to try to shoot a little bit more. Well, then at that point, I want you to understand, okay, well, maybe if I haven't popped my shift yet, I pop my shift. Like Pop my shift so I can focus on shooting a little bit more. My other support is alive. My other support can look to... Do, utilize that healing or for example maybe it's a tight fight well now at that point if my mercy in this example right would be able to pop her valkyrie then maybe i'm utilizing my shift on top of the valkyrie to help with that aoe healing right it's not a lot of aoe healing but it's still a little bit of overtime aoe healing plus the mercy valk right that will keep people alive that will allow me to focus more so on myself and potentially making plays on my own compared to looking to enable people to make plays by healing them and pocketing them right um so again, it's those kind of factors, I think, are the big things that you have to keep in mind for shift. Not very insane amount of stuff for shift, I would say. It's a very simple kind of cooldown now um, compared to a little bit more complex. And the last thing to kind of keep in mind here is this, which I actually find is very interesting. Because um, there's quite a few BAPs that do not do this, actually, when I look at their POVs. Um, and I find it's really important to kind of take into consideration and to note when doing this sort of stuff, shooting reverse, healing. Okay, I don't need this stuff. Whoop. Plus reloading. All right, so I almost spelled reloading wrong. We did not see that. Um, but overall, what do I mean by this? Well, pretty much the point that I'm trying to get for this is shooting versus healing. Your primary job is to heal. Your primary job is not to shoot. And that is true with window as well. Your primary job is to heal, not shoot. Uh, obviously, there's factors that determine if you heal over shooting. Uh, big thing is you want to heal if maybe it's an even fight and you guys are just starting off the fight. Uh, maybe you heal or you focus on healing if your team is getting engaged upon, right? Um, maybe you focus on healing if you're down members uh, compared to the enemy team. But you can maybe shoot if you guys are doing the engagement first for a few moments, right? Maybe you guys are up in numbers and you, again, you did that combination for shift plus mercy, right? Maybe you don't have to worry about healing for a quick moment of time. Maybe the HP bars are so healthy from your team compared to the enemy team. You don't have to worry about healing. You just can focus on shooting, right? Dealing damage. Um, but again, 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 your primary job on BAP is not to shoot, it's to heal, right? Um, and it comes based off of Again, those factors that I'll highlight again. And that brings into my last point of reloading. I kind of toggled that into here as well. And the big part for reloading is you need to keep in mind, whoop, you need to keep in mind that you should be reloading consistently uh, when you're in a spam phase or when, we're, when you're not fighting. You want to reload consistently, not because you want to have your, again, enough ammo to shoot. It's so, it's for your heal, right? I believe you can hold 12 in your clip, just to double check to make sure I'm not a liar. It's 10 actually, not 12. So that puts my point even more so into effect. 
you want to make sure that you can consistently heal and not have to reload to heal anybody, right? So if that's the point and that's the case, then I need to make sure before I get into a fight, before my team is ready to brawl or poke or whatever, I need to go into a fight with full heal, right? And you need to understand um, when do I do that? Uh, when can I determine when it's safe to reload? And the key thing is to determine when you're safe to reload here, right? Just looking at this real quick. Whoop. Number one is obviously, like I said, you're not fighting. And number two comes down to no one is low HP. Ooh, my cam is kind of blocking stuff, so like I'm gonna I'm trying to like think where I can move my cam here. I think instead I'm just gonna move it like a little bit over here. That way people can. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna disable my cam for a quick second so you guys can see this stuff. You know. Um. So like I was saying, when someone is low HP, now this black writing is starting to look very bad with that background. There we go. This background makes it look a little bit better. Um, you want to determine that you reload when you're not fighting, obviously, because when you're not fighting, that means you don't need your heal. You don't need max heals or anything like that. Your team can play it a little bit slower, which means you can kind of take it more easy, right? You still want to pocket and you still want to heal, but you can kind of find time in the middle to when you don't have to heal anymore or when you can kind of reload. When no one is low HP, that determines that you have a small window to either shoot someone or to heal someone or to reload to get more heals, right? So I guess a big thing is with shooting versus healing plus reloading, it's consistently managing when you should reload, when you should shoot, and when you should heal. It's a big thing that is a very small kind of thing to focus on but it actually makes a large impact on your baptiste play if you aren't able to properly manage those it's not cds but manage those resources properly from bap you're going to miss out on key situations when you should be healing somebody or when you could have a small window to actually shoot someone right and those can make a difference in these fights uh which is again why i'm bringing it up it's really important that people understand that uh because most people do not, I'll be honest with you. This is something that I see a lot of BAPs, especially an owl mess up a lot. Uh, so with healing, just to add as a note here, um, again, low HP. Low HP targets, I shouldn't probably say targets, I should probably say team. Fighting. For shooting, it's no low HP team. And then the other thing, aside from no low HP team fighting, is again, you're shooting based off of uh, advantage. Instead of fighting, I'll put no advantage. I feel like that's a better way to determine it compared to just me saying fighting. Um, no advantage. All right. So these are the five key points to keep in mind with Baptiste. Uh, again, super, super important points to keep in mind. Um, big thing again, to just recap with exo boots, I, I didn't think they were the most important thing to kind of talk about. Um, they are great. Yes. Don't get me wrong. But most of the time when you're utilizing exo boots, it's utilize it to potentially get in a better position for yourself in mid fights. And aside from being in better positions, it's just potentially dodging shots or being able to get over walls. And a lot of the time it's, just be proactive with your, your exo boots and don't spam them. It's nothing crazy. Um, does it make or break? Sometimes it does, but most of the time, these are the key things that are more important. Specifically, again, looking at this, if I had to highlight the key most important things, I'd probably say um, 
positioning positioning lamp usage and window is probably the key key core principles uh, that you have to keep in mind as map and then these are extra um, these are like advanced little details this will make you an adequate map this will make you a super strong map like very very different um, and again, it's based off positioning, it's based off lamp, windows, how you utilize your shift, and then reloading, shooting, healing, all those actions. How do you manage those resources in a proper way? And kind of go from there. So with that being said, webcam will shoot back on in just a moment. Whoop. Make this a little bit bigger again, just because. All right, sweet. So I'll keep those notes kind of there for now. Um, in terms of what we're going to do, we're going to look at Iris. We're going to look at a few fights on Nubani, right? And we're going to kind of see how Iris kind of plays this. Like I said, this is a little bit more corner heavy map. I focused on it because it shows great examples for lamps for his team. Um, based off of the compositions they're also playing, they're playing a little bit more of a bunkerish comp, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Okay. Again, you're seeing that he doesn't really have, I don't want to say a care, but he's just, he's not scared to utilize his shift if he needs to utilize his shift. Uh, you're seeing he'll shoot or heal a couple and then he's just reloading again. He, he wants to consistently make sure before they walk out that they have resources, right? You see that he's shooting, he's healing, he's going to reload because he has no heal left. Lamp goes out. You see the positioning of this lamp here, right? So I back up. Play over here for a quick second. I would have liked him to kind of reload here just because everyone's full HP. They have a shield, they have Matrix to play around. Uh, I would have rather him reloaded in this situation, but I can say it does look a bit scary. The big thing is, again, the positioning of the lamp. Not even just looking at his lamp, but looking at Soul's lamp, right? They have to push that corner in order to be able to destroy it. Iris's lamp here, he puts it directly so that it can activate right away you look at the positioning of the lamp the lamp is pretty much by the rooftop here i believe it'll go up more uh no nah, it doesn't i i eh, i would say the lamp is like okay not the best then i thought it was actually los but he has to use the lamp because he's scared that people are gonna die um do i think iris used it at the proper time i don't think gator was low hp i think the only scary part was iris yeah, Gator, Gator still had a lot of HP to work with. Yun kind of just was scared because he couldn't heal during that time. That's why he pops it. Um, and he sees that Gator again has no shift, so that's why he's a little bit scared. That's why he's doing it. Not max efficiency, uh, but overall, like we're seeing some key things that we talked about here with reloading, shooting, uh, healing. Again, you're seeing him consistently heal over shooting. He'll do that tech, and there's a tech where it's you... I think it's you spam heal and sh uh, your mouse one, which is the shooting action on your gun. And what ends up happening is you'll pop a, a heal and then you'll shoot twice and then you'll pop a heal and then you'll shoot twice. Um, he will consistently use that, but only when his team is kind of engaging. And the main reason why he's using it when it seems engaging compared to like all the time is again, he, he doesn't want to just waste bullets for no reason, right? He wants to make sure that he's utilizing them at the proper times. Um, when there are enemies in front of him and it's very easy for him to heal and shoot stuff right because when you're when you're doing that action it's really hard to aim heal and shoot at the same time right because you have to adjust based off of what you're looking to shoot and then what you're looking to heal okay so you see this pull lamp is utilized again in that very rare situation with pelican going for a barrage do i like the lamp positioning he tried to hit it on this corner here but what ended up happening was the cart seemed to push the lamp so he got a little bit unlucky there with the lamp we do see he has a window so let's see if he uses it on the pivot point he does use it on the pivot point right and again you see the strength here of this pivot point right they're forced to give up a little bit of space here and they can't they have to play like a tiny little room right from here again he's seeing that he's safe to reload he reloads because he's low on his healing and he lets his team kind of pressure up right 
And his positioning started again with the window. It started tight when his team was looking to explosively go past that corner. And then as they were unable to go past that corner in a very explosive manner, he backed up to play a little bit more of his life, right? So that's a situation where instead of starting with his team at a farther distance to value his life, he decided to start in a closer distance so they could take control of that corner based off the barrage there. And then he backed up because they weren't able to do it successfully and he wanted to make sure that he played his life a bit there. So good use of his positioning overall in terms of how he's utilizing his heal and his cooldowns. Again, his shift is being utilized when he sees fit. He's not, there's no straight kind of thing. When he feels like people are low HP, he'll pop it. When he feels like he needs it, he'll pop it. Nothing crazy. Big thing I do want to keep pointing out that reloading, he's reloading when he feels like he's low on heals and he's able to. So people aren't low HP. People are in very low danger. Um, he has that time, right? Shooting again. He's mainly healing in a lot of these situations. When he has the opp opportunity to shoot, he will shoot. Um, but yeah. Land positioning has been a little bit poor from Iris, uh, is something I will say. I, I wish it was a little bit better, but overall, so far, so good in terms of looking at overall thing. Again, he heals, he shifts because he sees someone low HP. He's healing a little bit and doing the ceiling and shooting tech again. But you saw at the start of the fight, right? He's not scared to shoot a little bit more. Um, you're seeing that since they were up a person there, he's shooting a lot more just because he knows that he doesn't have to focus on his healing as much. So even if he misses a few heals, he's hoping that the AOE will hit. But at the same time of the AOE hitting whoever he needs to heal, he's not concerned because they have such a big man advantage and space advantage. So he's just focusing on shooting and getting people a lot lower with the bongo there. Again, another window online. I, I want to see a better lamp with this corner. So realistically, I want to see as they walk up, the lamp is put in a position where the enemy can't shoot it really easily, but they control that pivot point, that middle section of the corner, so that they can kind of do that sort of aggression, right? So let's see what ends up happening here. He puts that window at that pivot point again, right? Instead of being explosive with it and playing very forward, he's playing more so in a back position because he saw that Prophet was right behind. He doesn't want to be too close so that he gets a part of that freeze kind of thing. He doesn't want to clump up for that freeze. Um, I missed the lamp there. I just want to go back and quickly look at the lamp real quick. But again, overall, good window position. He adjusted his positioning based off of what was happening. He wanted to go aggressive with it, but since he saw the May there a moment ago, he decides to kind of back up with the wall. He looks to jump over the wall here. Again, a good thing, but he's not going aggressive. He wanted to wait till Prophet died, then he wants to go a little bit aggressive. Again, window position or lamp position, it's not a bad spot um, if they hold that control at the corner right and you see that they're going back to hold control of the corner uh it seems like gator's a little bit more scared than iris is here to take that corner control but even if gator's shift is down he should not be scared he should be walking a lot more aggressive here um only only point of view i would say here with the lamp is maybe a little bit more in the mini room but overall the idea the philosophy behind it was pretty good dies just from a flanking a flanking fits but should get res pretty easily here. And again, you see that instead of playing back towards the corner, he's playing decently close to his team. He's obviously not stacking fully on top because he doesn't want to get frozen. But he's playing in a position where he can easily close the distance with his seal and be in a good position to shoot everyone. He doesn't want to play all the way back to the corner to isolate himself from his team. He's playing in a position where people can assist him from his team more easily and he can assist them uh, a lot more easily. So again, we're seeing based off of when he should be tight and when he should be farther away. He wasn't very concerned about his safety there just because of um, the respawns from Soul, right? They have control of the space. They have to retake the space from Soul. As long as he's just not on top of his tanks and he's in a decently close proximity, he should be able to get a lot more value compared to if he's further back. Even though he sees more further back, it means that he potentially is in a situation where he could die because he's isolated from his team again. And the other thing to keep in mind is his healing, his heal will take a little bit longer to land, right? Just distance wise, right? Because it is a projectile. It's not instantaneous. And the last thing to keep in mind there is just he's in a better position to shoot, hit his shots, right? Um, yeah. 
So something else, I'll bring, I'll show it back up again, like these points here, right? When we look at the core points, he's doing a fantastic job in terms of his windows. The positioning with these corners are great at the pivot points. Uh, he is going first tempo. You see that he's always popping his window first, and Soul's always reacting with their window, which is great. You do want to do that. You want to start it off. And you see that most of the time, he, he plays the, the position with his window. He uses it, uses it blah, blah. He uses it by range, but at the same time, he's ready to leave the window if he needs to, right? Whether it's to escape and play a safer position, or it's to it's to play in a more aggressive position and push with his team, right? Um, lamp usage is a little bit rough in terms of when to use and the location. It seems like he's getting a little bit caught off guard in terms of the location to put his lamp, and not just the location, but he seems a little bit rough in terms of utilizing it in a proper way uh it feels like he's usually using it too early on gator i don't know if it's because gator's pushing like feels like he has to back up because of his shift usage or whatnot but it feels a little bit rough on that end but again the other big thing i'll say is with the advanced stuff his shooting versus healing versus reloading very very good you see him consistently doing this reloading action you see him understanding when he should shoot over healing you see the combination because of the tech that i talked about before right um and then again, positioning is very good. He understands when he needs to be a little bit further at the start or when he needs to be further away based off of threats. Or he plays a little bit tighter because of that explosive action. He wants to get a little bit more value, right? Ooh. So to start off, right, uh, we see that they probably scouted out this composition. He doesn't want to play right close by. The main reason why he doesn't want to play close by here when he comes back up here is because number one... Um, Oh, right now he's scouting. But number one, the big reason why he doesn't want to play close is because he wants to have that angle with the Pharah here, right? You see that he is focusing, yes, on his core, but he he looks right away to this Pharah just before he takes a rock because he wants to still pressure her, right? Um, do I think that Kai, Pelican, and Iris should focus on to the Pharah? No, I think one of the two should focus on her um, while the other kind of focuses forward, right? Pelican will definitely be one of the people that holds that flank, but it should only be Iris or Kai looking... Again, you see Iris trying his best to kind of heal everybody up. He, uses all, he utilizes the shift when his team starts to take a little bit of aggro there. Um, he's unable to heal up Masa enough there to kind of keep him alive. Oh, great boops. Hyun just putting himself in... Or Hyun, I gotta catch my words here. Iris is putting himself in positions where he is getting easily booped, it looks like. Um... Do I think that's on him? I don't think it's more on him. I think he's playing in good positions to see stuff. It just felt like there was less pressure on Prophet, so Prophet was able to go for more aggressive concusses uh, comparatively to trying to utilize it for himself or his safety against uh, Pelican. I think overall, it was just a miscommunication from Atlanta there in terms of who deals with Farah and what. Um, <clears throat> I think that those concussive uh, blasts though really forced Iris to not be in favorable positions to heal um, or in order to deal with threats that are around him. So again, this is an example, even though there's a corner around there, this is an example of wanting to utilize a window past the corner in a more open area. He utilizes the window in an area where he can see the top, he can see right on point. We didn't see an engagement line and that's mainly just because Sol already has control of the point. So he just want to utilize this to put out pressure, right? Sadly, he's unable to get the lamp out in time. Seems like Prophet's able to get a very valuable barrage there. Shut down and kill three. Um, not really much he can do there. Now they don't have the window to take corner control as productively as they want to in this situation. So a big thing there is, again, the lamp, lamp, lamp is the big thing. I kind of want to pressure onto Iris. It feels like his lamps aren't coming out at the right time. Again, it's hard to kind of react to that specific play, to be fair. Uh, he would need require a little bit of Matrix before that. But again, it's a big thing that we need to make sure that we get our lamp out and we put it in a safe spot so that we don't die. If he put it a little bit closer to the corner, a little bit further back, Fair's Barrage wouldn't have been able to kill it. He would have been able to keep his team alive and they would have been able to shut him down. Um, now looking at this fight, you see he's using these exo boosts. Like I said, I didn't want to focus on it too much because it's very simplistic in terms of using exo boosts. But it's mainly just utilizing it to get on high ground, putting himself in a better position. Um, sometimes he'll boost up to just get easier shots onto the Pharah. 
uh, make it an even level of LOS compared to forcing himself to have to look up and then just go back and forth with flicks. Um, easier when it's at that same level to kind of shoot. But now like you see his positioning here, right? You see that he's positioning a little bit further back. He knows that they have a lot of uh, ultimates online. When they activate the bongo, you see that he looks to be a little bit tighter with his team. He's playing a close high ground here on the high, or a close high ground, sorry, when they go for the aggressive take on the corner. He's not exactly right on top of Gator, but he's in a vicinity where he can help him play that aggressive angle there. So again, he's positioning himself accordingly based off of the play that they're doing, which is good. At the start, he's putting himself in a good enough distance where he's not taking free poke, but he's still able to heal his entire team relatively well, right? So great position from him. Again, the window comes out. It's not potentially the best for him, but you see right there, right? As the window goes out, instead of positioning himself so he's closer to the window, he's just looking to position himself in a better position or a safer position if they walk out on him, right? Positioning again of the window, I liked. Uh, it forced Soul maybe not to die, but it forced him to have to use resources and hide for a little bit of time. From here, we see him rechange his position. He knows that he has to drop from the high ground because of the enemy window from Soul. We see that the lamp is online. Lamp should go into the corner here. Again, Iris getting caught off guard by a barrage again. <laughs> if he could have popped out his win or his window, his lamp fast enough, they wouldn't have been able to get value with the barrage. So far, it seems like Iris has been struggling a lot with this lamp against barrage. Uh, he isn't fast enough at identifying when he should look to lamp. And do I think, again, that's fully on him. I think part of it is on him. He needs to be ready to utilize this window at better times. Yes, his tanks aren't going towards low HP, but they need to keep a better, a better eye on the enemy Pharah, especially when she has barrage, because she's getting away with murder. I think that's a little bit more on Hawk so that he can DM it, and then Lamp can come out a little bit later if required. But there needs to be a little bit more talk and synergy with that there for sure, because uh, it's, not, it's not hitting the right location sometimes or majority of the time um, and he's not getting it out fast enough to be able to get value with it again the hardest part about window when do you pop the window when do you get it out in these situations you saw gators not even half hp good lamp to protect yourself looking to go forward here again he utilizes the shift for himself he doesn't utilize the shift for really anybody else in that situation He's shooting a little bit. He's focusing again mainly on healing. You see that he had a lot of uh, ammo in his clip still for left click, but he reloads mainly so that he can look to utilize uh, more healing, right? Again, he's not focusing on utilizing the window there and shooting through the window. He's looking on utilizing to keep Gator alive and up, right, in that fight. So, again, good, good example of showing Iris' decision making there in terms of not fully focusing on the window, focusing on his primary job of healing over anything else. Um, again, these Barrage getting incredible value from Profit there. And I think it comes down to when we look at it again, I, I enjoy the positioning that I see um, a lot actually from Iris. I think he's in good positions at the right time. Again, he's he's tight with his team when he needs to, when they're going for very explosive, aggressive actions. Um, and when they look to go do something very fast. But he, when they're playing a little bit slower, a little bit more for poke, he's looking to play a little bit further back. Or, depending on an enemy alt threat, he, he plays a little bit further back from his team so that he's not caught up with his team if they get caught in it, right? They have to choose between killing him or killing his team, which is good. Um, there are some situations where obviously the barrage is coming out and it's catching him and his team. Uh, I think those are outlier situations where... He, I don't think that's his fault in terms of positioning. I think that's just a issue with regard to they're not respecting Prophet's barrage and they're not sure when Prophet's going for the barrage. They're losing track of Prophet in these fights. And do I think that's on him? I don't think that's on him. His job is, again, to heal his team, right? He can shoot stuff after he knows his team is safe. They have an advantage. They're not low HP anymore. But if they are, then he needs to focus on keeping them alive if they keep getting pressured which he's doing so it should be more so on pelican and hawk to look for this fair a little bit more mark her a bit more because she's just getting away with so much onto iris especially with that uh, rocket barrage again looking at this window positioning i still enjoy the window positioning i see he's always looking to use it very aggressively he's always looking to use it at those corners 
those pivot points really well. He doesn't want to give up those corners for free because it allows for him to potentially be in a good position with his lamp. And just it gives that uh, nice positioning to his tanks as well to where they can back up and play into the safety of their supports who shouldn't be pressured as hard, right?